Hi friends, my name is Megan and welcome to my 56th floss tube episode. If you are new here, welcome. This is a channel that's mostly about cross stitch. Uh, however, I do share my other hobbies here when I have worked on them. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back and spending time with me. I appreciate all of you even more than you know. Uh, today is Saturday, it is November the 30th, and it is a sunny but definitely chilly day here in Maryland. Um, some of my favorite weather. Uh, if you celebrate the U.S. Thanksgiving, I hope that you had a great holiday. Um, that was just on Thursday. Uh, we do host the holidays here, and it was a it was a pretty small uh, group for dinner this year. Only six of us, which was kind of nice. Sorry if the camera is shaking already. The dogs jumping, the cats jumping. There's all kinds of <laughs> the regular chaos, I guess. Um, but anyways, um, I hope you had a great holiday and I uh, hope that you're having a nice relaxing weekend afterwards um, if that's something that you can have. And today is one of my favorite days. It's turkey stock day. Uh, so turkey stock is working so I can make soup tomorrow and um, the house smells delicious and <sighs> it's pretty great. <laughs> um, I did also want to start off by thanking everybody for their kind words uh, regarding the loss of our little kitty cat, Ingus. Um, you know, things are never the same when you lose a pet. Because um, they take up such a big part of our hearts and our lives. And, you know, we're just getting used to having that hole there. So, um, thank you again for all of your kind words uh, regarding her. But on to happier topics. <laughs> Um, it's only been about uh, three weeks or so, a little less than, since I was here last. And I normally don't come back uh, that soon, but uh, I won't probably film again until the end of the year. And that's kind of my New Year's Eve tradition, is to film my last update for the year and do my whip parade. So uh, I knew that if I didn't do this now, it would be until then, and then it would be too much. <laughs> um, plus I have my fully finished uh, Christmas ornaments here. For my co-workers uh, and if I waited until then I wouldn't be able to show them to you so um, other than that we're doing okay here uh, I've got Miss Coraline Ethel Oliver <laughs> down here on the floor uh, hopefully she'll be a good girl Thanksgiving definitely tired her out so she's been sleepy ever since then um, Mittens was running around Tarzan's upstairs Aaron's at work Quentin's at work or about to go to work um, so yeah, here we are. Uh, I don't have too, too much to share with you. I think this is going to be a pretty quick update. Like I said, I've got my, um, ornaments, uh, here to share with you. I have, um, a couple of works in progress. I have the new starts that I made for my birthday, and I think I only have, like, three pieces of, um, haul that came in the mail, so... This should be super quick. <laughs> um... But let's get started. So okay, we need to take a quick mailman break, but I think the excitement is over. So, <laughs> all right, so let's get into the stitching. Um, if you've been with me for a while, um, you'll know that this um, is my third year that I have stitched ornaments for my coworkers. I normally stitch eight, and this year I had to stitch nine. Um, my boss got a promotion, which is wonderful. I'm so happy for her, and I got a new boss, and she's also lovely. So I wanted to make sure that everybody got one this year. Um, so the first ones I'm going to show you are the ones that you've seen me working on uh, here and there since July, and that is the Monogram Ornament by Florine Studios. Picture in here. It'll also be linked uh, down below. Pretty much everything I talk about is linked down below, so to make it easy peasy. <laughs> um, anyways, I stitched them on 36 count summer khaki using um, colors from my stash. I did not use the called for DMC. I think I used three silks one over dyed cotton and I added in some red crinic as well. And I finished them all the same way. So here's the first one. It's our cute bullet focus. There we go. Uh, so as you can see, I added a little butcher's twine and a little sparkly hanger here. Um, the crinic, I'm not sure if you can see the sparkle there, but the crinic is in the berries and I did a little crinic French knot in the middle of the bow. Here's the first one. That's the fabric I chose for the back. There's the second one. The third one. This uh, pattern is very easy to follow and uh, it stitches up super quick. So um, 
makes a great gift. The pattern is inexpensive. And I'm really happy with how this year's ornaments turned out. So there's all six. And those will go to them the week of the 16th. Um, I did also want to mention, um, because I bemoaned ornaments in the past because I'm terrible at cutting circles, um, that when I went to my, I can't remember if I showed this in my last video, but when I went to the Stitch and Swap um, in the beginning of November, I sat next to my friend Heather and she's like a gadget queen. She knows of all the right gadgets to have. And she told me about this compass cutter that she got. Um, and I ordered it immediately, like right there sitting next to her. So this is what I used to cut the circles uh, for all of the ornaments. Um, and I got this on Amazon and if I remember it was pretty inexpensive and I'll link this below too, but this was like a lifesaver. So thank you Heather for suggesting this. It worked perfectly. The next ornament I have here is um, for my boss that got the promotion. Um, she, every year we would do the Grinch games. It was like a big, um, that was like our team holiday thing that we did. Um, and so when I found this little Grinch uh, pattern by Ecliptica Design, I think is how you say it. Again, I'll have to put a picture right here on Etsy. Um, I had to stitch that one for her. So this one I did use the called for DMC. This is on the 40 count mallow. I used my little bow maker that from Chantel's 141 to make that little bow. And I just did a little whoop, sparkly fabric on the back. So that was also cute and fast. Um, there is one of my coworkers that I don't know how it, it wasn't on purpose necessarily, but every year I stitch her something from um, Hello from Liz Matthews. I did the holly, I did her little tree, um, and this time I did her Merry Mini pattern. I think this was on her Patreon. Um, I'm not mistaken. So there's the finish of that one. I used the called for DMC. Just a little. Oops. Plain green on the back, a little gold trim, and two ribbons for the hanger. Um, so yeah, I just I always do a little Liz Matthews for her. Um, the color schemes all always go together beautifully, and uh, I like to do it on this little polka dot fabric. So I love that one. And the last one I did is for uh, my new boss, <laughs> and I'm not sure about the the way I fully finished this one. I've never uh, so the project was a Mill Hill Snow Crystal Amethyst Crystal um, ornament. Looks like this. And I've never finished one of these snowflake ornaments, so I wasn't really sure what what to do. <laughs> um, but I did my best, so it would be a hanger. So here is finish. Hopefully that, there we go. Here's the finished ornament, and there's a little charm at the bottom. And I did this like purple sparkly paper behind it, and a silver sparkle on the back. But I don't know. I don't think that. I don't know. I mean, obviously these are all handmade, but this one feels like it looks extra handmade. So I don't. I don't know. I'm second guessing myself on this one, but it's done, and it's done done. So. <laughs> That was fun. I enjoyed doing Mill Hills. So hopefully she likes that. All right, so those are all of my fully finished objects. And next we're gonna get into what I worked on in the last three or so weeks. I did also wanna say that I am very much in awe of people that finish cross stitch all the time. I don't do it very often, even though I stitch an awful lot. Um, and doing those ornaments yesterday took me all of nine hours. Like, it took me a really long time. And I guess maybe it's because I don't do it uh, very often, but I just, I'm in all of the people that can, are always finishing their things. It's amazing to me. But anyways, uh, when last we spoke, I was working on my birthday start. If you guys remember, I was starting four big projects for my 40th birthday, and this was the one that I started on my actual birthday. This is Jean Portabon, 1906. Looks like this. 
I love everything about this, but especially the donkey and the um, doll. I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count summer khaki. And this project is 334 by 334, so she is big. She did need a fat half of um, fabric. She lives in my Grateful Dead bag that I made. Love this one. And I'm using all of the called for DMC. I am stitching this two strands over two on the 36 count. And this was so fun that I did not want to put it down. So I did work on it until I got a page finish. Um, and that did mean that some of my other projects got a little less time because this doesn't, like this is small, right? <laughs> but this was a lot of stitching. Um, so hopefully that'll focus there. There we go. So that's where one, one little tiny page <laughs> is. Um, as always, the colors are never quite as vibrant on screen as they are in real life. The red is red red. Um, this is beautiful. The borders are intense. Like there's, I guess, technically three borders on this project, but there she is. And I love her so, so much, so much. Uh, the next project that I pulled out to work on was an existing whip. And this is another project that I love so much. Uh, this was my birthday start from last year, and this was Ellen Harrison, 1889. I started this with Emily C. of Eclectic Possessions. Um, it's part of the, I think we called it the BAD sale. For the ass deer. <laughs> uh, I love, love, love this project. It lives in this very special project bag that was um, given to me by a sweet friend. I am using the Color and Cotton Conversion that Emily C. Uh, did when she was there. You can uh, email or call the store and ask for that conversion. And these are the colors. I've got multiples of each of these colors. Um, I originally thought I was going to stitch it on 36 count over uh, the two over two, but I don't know if you were with me for last year that I started this project like. I don't know, five times <laughs> trying to find the fabric that I liked and um, I ended up stitching it on 40 count so I'm going to have plenty of floss for that. And I am stitching it on 40 count overcast by Color and Cotton. This was an October 2023 fabric club. And here, gracious Megan, here's where she is. So I do love how she's turning out. I really, um, I thought that I was going to move over here and do this next page up top and I did take uh, some like leftover threads that I had parked and I worked those over but all I really really wanted to do was stitch a house. <laughs> I just wanted happy mindless house stitching and this uh, did that for me <laughs> for sure. So maybe if I go that way you can see it a little better. Hang on, I'm going to try to add another light. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if that's better or worse, but <laughs> here we are. Um, so yeah, uh, this was my lunchtime stitching and sometimes my evening stitching, and it brought me a lot of um, comfort. And there's so many good memories uh, that I have with this piece, so love it. I was glad to work on that. Uh, the next project that I have is another one of my big new starts. And that is The Shores of Hawk Run Hollow by Kara Chow Sampling, which looks like this. This one is 371 wide by 278 high. So I would say that yes, that is a nice big project. And I started right in the very center. Uh, it's living in this project bag that I made. I, so far I'm using the called for DMC. I don't know if um, as I go into different blocks if I'm going to want to change any of them out for overdides. Same with I think the next project that I have here to share with you. I might do the same with that. This is being stitched on a piece of 40 count um, linen and it does not have a name but here are the details. Maybe. 
hopefully that'll focus. If not, I will put it definitely, like I said, down below. It'll all be down there. Um, so yeah, I just got a little start on this center flock here. And that's it. <laughs> Apparently we're having lighting issues today. Anyways, um, so that's all I got done. Um, just a little bit of the sails and kind of half stitched the border of that um, of that block. So not not too much. That's not a terrible start, but that it is a start. Uh, I did miscount my border once and I had to rip it back out. Um, so that's probably why there's not a whole lot done there. But I love this fabric. If you guys can see how cool that is with all the little blue splotches. I, I really like that. Alright, so the next project was another one of my big new starts, and this one is a little has a little bit of a cautionary tale to it, um, as does one of my other projects. Uh, the next big project I started was Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain, which we all know and love, right? Uh, this is 419 wide by 269 high. This is a big, big project. Um, I'm sure all of you have seen, but if not, you should definitely go see uh, Lisa Smith of Kindred Stitcher. She finished this over one on 32 count, and it is amazing. <laughs> uh, so for this, I'm using a piece of 18 count uh, Ivory Ada that I had tea and coffee dyed um, many, many years ago. Uh, this project has been kitted up for a very long time, um, and it lives in this project bag that I made last year. I love that bag. Um, and I've got all of the called for, it's not on a ring yet, I've got all the called for DMC, which is a ton of it. And again, with this one, I'm probably gonna go through and um, pull some overdides if I feel like it's necessary. Um, Antique Ivory, I did substitute the black for sulky black. I just like the coverage a little bit better on this 18 count and um, here. So this is, where I got to. Um, so as you can see, this is pretty big. <laughs> I need to cut off uh, the extra. That's actually why I decided to start with the getting the border in was I wanted to be able to cut off what I what I needed to and I wanted to make sure that I had measured everything and got it all to fit properly, which it did. Um, so I just went in and started doing half of the border. And this was a lot of fun. This was just very, it's a regular border. Uh, except for in the corners maybe there's no surprises you you can just keep going um, but here I don't know if you can see right here uh, maybe not so much over here but right here is a little bit of a lighter spot like I said I've had this kitted up for years um, I think March will be six years that I've done floss tube and this has been kitted up for longer than that for sure and this fabric has been folded up in that bag for however many years that it's been and I didn't realize when I first started uh, stitching on this that there is a definite fold line where the dye um, yeah I think you can see it there you can you can see the fold line where the dye or in this case the coffee tea whatever mixture I used um, has faded and this was not like anywhere where sunlight hit it at all, um, but I guess just from being folded in the same way for all of those years, that happened. I think maybe you can see that one right there too. Uh, so I'm not worried about it. It's going to be fine. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is once I get the border, the rest of the border in, I'm just going to go ahead and dunk it back in some tea and coffee and that will cover that up and we will move on and everything will be great. So, but just a just something maybe to keep in mind that uh, if you've got uh, fabric that's been folded up the same way for a long, long, long time, maybe take it out and refold it in a different way um, or something like that. So just to help to avoid <laughs> things like that. Like in this case, it's totally fine because that sulky is, um, you know, this this won't bleed, and I dyed that myself, so it won't matter. But something to think about. Alright, the next project that I have pulled out, um, 
I put out earlier this week, so it got very little progress, only this was my lunchtime stitching Monday, Tuesday, and a little bit on Wednesday. Um, but that project is Old Mustard Moon by Not Forgotten Farm. Love this. I started this last year, I think it was Thanksgiving weekend, with Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. Um, and I haven't worked on it since then, so I was happy to pull this out. This lives in this project bag that I made out of an old t-shirt that I love. I'm using a few of the called for uh, colors, but mostly I am stitching it in um, just colors from my stash. I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count murky. If I, if I remember, Julie went to Country Sampler and maybe they had it stitched on murky. Um, and so I I believe we're both stitching it on murky. Um, and here's where we are. Um, so I didn't get a whole lot done because like I said, it was only a few days of lunchtime stitching and that's half an hour to 40 minutes, depending on if I have to like run an errand or do a gas or whatever on my lunch break, so. I did fill in this top band here and I did outline the moon and just start filling him in a little bit. So I was glad to work on that even if it was only for a few days. I think I only have, I do try to touch all of my works in progress every year and I think I've got two left that haven't been touched yet. So that should be easy peasy to get done in December. All right, uh, the next is my last big start uh, for my birthday extravaganza. This also has a cautionary tale to it. Um, this project is by Birds of a Feather. This is Autumn. I've already started The Winter Girl with my friend Rebecca. And so I started Autumn. And I did push this one off to last because I needed to um, pull my own colors for it. And I just really was not in the right headspace to do that. And so this did not get started until the day before Thanksgiving. So this has got a measly little start. Um, all of my girls live in this beautiful bag here. I'm stitching them on a piece of 38 count cloister by Legacy Linen. And here are her colors. There's some wild colors in this. <laughs> So to choose uh, the colors for this project, and this is typically how I do it, if I um, if I have the called for color, I'll pull that out. Like if I know if I'm changing all the colors, I'll pull out the called for color, or I will look up uh, the floss on Lindy Stitches because her pictures are really, really, really good um, of the floss on there. So I will look them up there, and I'll have my DMC color card, and I'll also be looking at the picture on the cover. So. Um, Sometimes that's a lot, and this kind of felt like a lot. But anyways, I love the colors. They are all definitely brighter <laughs> than uh, you are seeing there on screen. And here is my little, little start. So just, um, yeah. One little spider, the start of a bird's tail, a couple pumpkin vines, a little bit of the sky, and this is um, the start of a blossom. Here, I'll show you. It's this corner right here. So that spider, that bird tail, the start of this flower, and the little blue um, bits to the sky. So just a little start there, and again, I said this had a cautionary tale to go with it. I don't know if you can see all this fringe here. Um, this fabric was not cut uh, very even, and so here, you can see like the difference on the sides, on both sides. I was looking at it, and I was like, "Wow, this looks um, something looked wrong." When I was like getting it out and measuring to get it started. So I decided to pull a thread and um, see exactly what I was working with so I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> and everything is going to fit fine, but this was just like a reminder that, you know, sometimes it pays to check um, that your fabric is really the size that you think it is. Um, I know that uh, Cross It to Globe was talking about that on one of their videos too. Um, they had a similar problem with the Mirabilia they were stitching. Uh, so just, just a reminder to check. I'm going to 
cut all this off and I, I was given a serger that I haven't um, yet figured out how to use so I'll go ahead and serge the edges on this and I also did pull out my winter girl um, and the fabric is also cut a little wonky on that and I think that she will still fit I measured it she'll fit but the my bottom margin is gonna be tight I believe so anyways this just got a small small little baby start <laughs> but that's okay she'll be waiting for me when I'm ready uh, speaking of small starts I did make a small start on um, Thanksgiving as well uh, we were eating a little earlier than normal uh, we normally have our dinner later in the afternoon but we had it at two o'clock this year and I um, wanted to be able to get a few stitches in before people came over so I pulled out this project this is from the I bought this when it was part of a I don't know call it like a club or whatever I think once a season or every other month I can't I can't remember because it was 2020 um, but the inspired needle did this um, French kitchen club so I have stitched all of them except for this one this is apple and sage like this. Oh, these all live in, have lived in this flimsy little project bag that I made. Um, I, have all, I use all of the kit, everything, all the call for uh, fibers and fabric. This is a 32 count, is it chocolate milk or milk chocolate by um, Hand Up by Stephanie. And here's my little here there my little baby start just a couple little apples that. I'm not sure why I'm having there we go focus issues today uh, so just a little symbolic little start now it started um I don't know why I kept forgetting about this one mm. I don't know why it's taking me so long, but whatever, it started. Uh, hopefully that'll be a quick finish next year. And I do have this last pattern that kind of completes the series, and it's the French Kitchen. And I believe it uses all of the same flosses that were already in the kit, so I'm on the fence about if I'm going to do this one or not. But I have it just in case I want to. And then finally, the last uh, project I have to share with you today um, is by Stacy Nash. I am attending the Jingle Ball this year. Um, I had a great time at Midsummer Stitch, so I'm going to give the Jingle Ball a go. Um, and I did sign up for the Stacy Nash class, and I ordered the kit as well. This is for the Gingerbread House Sewing Book, which looks like this. This is really cute. And so I am trying to get some of the pre-stitching done. Um, probably what I'll work on for this next week. It's living in this cute little Winter Fox um, project bag. And the kit came so cute. It came in this little in this little bag here. And it came with everything you needed. You know, here's the, the batting, the linen, the additional linen, the uh, wool, the floss, the ribbon, everything you need. And the fabric is, I got the 36 count Wean Beans by Needle Bling, um, Needle Bling. And here is my little start on the front. I'm stitching it one over two on this 36 count, um, which is only my preference when I'm stitching in hand. If I'm stitching uh, on 36 count, typically I like two over, but I'm just using one for this. Um, yeah, so I haven't gotten a whole lot done, but I'm looking forward to uh, working on this. I'll be working on this later today for sure. Um, and hopefully seeing some of you at the Jingle Ball. That'd be great. All right, that's everything that I've worked on. Um, I just have three little things that have come in the mail. Uh, here's my color and cotton fabric of the month. Uh, this was November's color. This is Cream Puff, which is beautiful. I can see where Tarzan was chewing on the bag in the very middle. Oh, I can't see that. There's little indents in the middle of my fabric from Mr. Tarzan chewing on the bag. I still have yet to get another container to 
keep all my false tube stuff in. I really need to do that. Um, so that's my fabric of the month. I placed an order with Mad for Minders. Um, and Lacey's always showing some really cool needle minders that she gets from there. And I have a lot of needle minders that I've collected over the years. Um, and I have not bought any. I can't remember the last time I bought needle minders. Um, so these are the ones that I got. Obviously this one, because that looks just like Tarzan eyes and all. <laughs> um, this uh, Peter Rabbit one is going to go with my Beatrix Potter sampler. Uh, a baguette because I love bread and that's a medieval cat so those are cool I like those and the last thing that I have here which also shows signs of Tarzan's interference uh, is the fault of Annie who is XO needle in the hay XO she was sharing uh, various mm, finds on her um, Instagram stories and she showed this little Riola's kit and I had to go scoop it up right away because that is stinking cute. But look at the other ones in this series. <laughs> they are silly looking. <laughs> but all right, that's it. That's all I got. Uh, I hope everybody is looking forward to a um, uh, December that is kind and. I hope everybody's doing the very best that they can. Um, I'm going to get ready and clean all this stuff up and put away all of my fall decorations. Um, the boys have convinced me to get an artificial tree for the first time in my life. Uh, other than when I was growing up we had an artificial tree, but as an adult I have never had an artificial tree. Um, so that will be different, uh, but Aaron did promise that we could still go to the tree farm and I could get some like evergreen boughs that I could hang up and they will make a big mess <laughs> as per tradition. Um, so we'll do that. I guess we'll probably decorate the tree tomorrow. Um, and yeah, I know December is not easy for everybody, including myself, and I just hope that everybody's doing okay. All right. Love you guys. Bye.